greatest Sunday, the 2nd of July. We're actually at St Mary's Church in Stainedrop. Um, this one is a particular person of interest to me because it's got the, the majority of my line of family members here with it in the wonderful last of tombs and effigies that have been placed here, um, just to show you around. But the church itself was built here um, in 771, so 771, but it's been in existence and workings for the best part of 2,000 years, to be said, in total. Um, as we come through, it's, um, it's such a lovely church, it's got the, obviously lots of the original features in here, which is so nice and rare these days in many of the churches. We've got um, here Henry Neville, the 5th Earl of Westmoreland, who died in 1564. And you can see he's there with his wonderful family side of him. And, it, and it's quite interesting because this is made of wood and it's purely of, uh, it's, it's black and oak. Oh, which is quite nice. But then we come over to the next one, which is of particular interest to me, which is Marjorie, the second wife of um, the Earl Ralph, or Ralph Neville, or Lord Ralph Neville, however you want to refer to him as. And, and she's around about 1343, as it says on the plaque. But what's interesting is she's actually placed, as best as she can, right under our own designated rows there of the Neville family. Now, as we know, we're going to see that in the church as well, which is nice to see, is that the Neville family, as we know, only came into existence after the death of Lord Robert Fitzmaudred's mother. And then he hated his father that much that he decided to take the maiden name of his mother. And thus, the, this Neville line was born, as it were. But let's not forget about um, the King... All red, or all Utrecht even, but it depends on how people pronounce it. Actually, the King of Northumberland at the time, back in 771, um, of particular interest, and how that ties into the line. And then we can start to see why um, we've got um, the various Neville families all here. Obviously, they, they, they finance the building of the church and the certain myth and legend regards to things that are buried here. Um, and this one I particularly like, the Warwick the Kingmaker, as, um, they, they're totally, and it was mentioned on the BBC t TV series as well, the grandson of Ralph Neville, whose effigy is captured in the alabaster tomb. We can see that here very nice. Um, and he in particular, you can see that Ralph's second marriage to Joan Beaufort, um, the effigy on the left of, of Ralph, so that's quite nice as well. So it's got a lot of... To me, it's got a lot of peace about it here anyway. I mean, the alabaster is a lovely... We always talk about the alabaster being one of the most important stones in anything to do with Priory, really. So it's no wonder... Sorry, it's got a spider there. It's no wonder that um, a lot of the tombs are made of the particular material, really. This is a particular wonderful presentation of um, Ralph Neville. And you can see it's KG there. Yeah? Ralph Neville KG. First Earl of Westmoreland. And that brings us into the Masonic line. Um, that you, um, I almost expected to see Ralph Neville KG TPL, Knight Grand Commander of the Temple. KGC TPL or KG TPL, which is in the period. Because when we see further up into the church, we'll see the wonderful, mosaic, the wonderful flooring that is very typical of Masonic lodges as well, which is of no great surprise. Ralph, first out of Westmoreland, as we see here, we've got the um, 1364 to 1425, we've got two wives, Mar Margaret Stafford, as we know, and Joan Beaufort. So um, I don't think I mentioned the name in regards to Marjorie or Margaret. She's actually known as Marjorie, actually, not actually as Margaret, but there we are. Um, very interesting points here. You can see this very nice little shield. Lovely. It's a wonderful piece. And if you can see, I don't know if you can see that that close, you've actually got the Sinclair cross embedded within it. So we actually have the we have the towel, but on the you if you get really close to it, I don't know how much you can see, you've actually got the Sinclair cross. And most importantly, which is to, to point out, you've got the crescent moon. Just here. of interest with the Baines and the Nevilles is the in-union um, 
markings there. We can see that we've got the the, the blend in the marriage, as it were, between the, the family lines and the recognition, I guess, most importantly. And uh, you can see on there so much, again, you don't often see that in these particular ones. You've got the knight at the bottom here, the knight templar. Uh, at the top there, you've got the knight with the sword thrust out towards the lion, which would represent kinhood or kingship. Absolutely wonderfully kept. Most of these are going back to the Victorian times, very much so. They were replaced. So these are relatively new in, in comparison. And over here, I just want to, there's a step there. But over there, I just want to point out to this wonderful piece that's here that used to be used those years ago. It almost looks like a face with a mouth and the eyes and the nose. And this used to be used a long time ago, um, as in a very long time ago. We're looking at over a thousand years ago when this was last used. So um, that's of particular interest as well. Um, and it's, it's just been left the way it is, really. Quite interesting. I have to put a piano in front of it, I suppose, to stop people having attention or focus upon it. I'm looking into a lodge. It's laid out the same way as a lodge. Or perhaps the lodge is laid out the same way as the church. You know, which came first, the chicken or the egg, or the seed or the plant? So, and when you walk in, you feel like you're back in a, in a lodge because of the layout. Um, in particular, um, in here, I think it's a wonderful, it has a wonderful feel to it. I don't know how much other people feel with it. But to me, it has a really nice part of it. And uh, I couldn't resist that to come over and sit in one of the seats here because they're so so calming the things and you know this is the uh, it's just wonderful it's just wonderful to be able to sit here and in awe I guess would be the best way of saying it. Absolutely in awe. So we've got the we've got the main table here of the Sonic Lodge as it were. And then when we come here we see straight away we see the Neville Shields are straight across. Straight across the main high altar. The Neville Shield. Without the rose obviously, but it has a Neville Shield. Right the way across. I'll just draw your attention to the altar piece. What I like about it is we have the the flower, we have the Alpha to Omega, we can see the Alpha to Omega, which is lovely, but then we actually have the cross and a triangle, the ascending triangle. So, and the cross extends beyond the triangle. And, and in particular, when we look at Priory and Knights Templar and moving forward into different chapters, we certainly look at that in particular. Again, straight up to the top there, that's the wonderful stained glass window. And then going up even higher, we can see, you can just about see into there, you've got the shield there of the Neville as well. And you've got the square with three order of the eastern stars within it, representing the Trinity. Um, I should have said that um, the Earl Ralph Neville is my 15 times great-grandfather. I didn't actually mention that. I mean, obviously, they're all my um, great-grandparents in the, in the line, um, so it's quite nice for me to be here today and, and see all that. Um, I actually have to touch the tomb, as weird as that sounds, or as macabre as that sounds, it's quite, quite pleasant. Again, here in this, this part of the church, we have more of the, the Neville family, well, the Fitzmaudrin family, in a sense, but the Neville family. And we actually have Euphemia declavering, 
uh, which is on my genes list as well. First wife of Ralph, it says there quite clearly, um, and mother of the builder of this particular aisle, because obviously this was funded and built by the Neville family, my family. Um, obviously she's over here because she was the first wife. She died and then the Earl remarried Marjorie or Margaret. And then obviously she, because she was the most recent wife at the end of death, she would be the one that goes into the main dedicated area of the Nevilles. So this one I particularly like because it shows about the family name exactly as it is. 13th century effigy of the Lady Isabel. Um, the Neville heiress whose marriage to Robert Fitz Mordred brought the Neville name into Rabbi. Well, that, that is and isn't true. We know by fact that Robert Fitz Mordred changed his name by depot after the death of his mother to Neville to, to honour her maiden name and the fact that he didn't like his father was already mentioned. So, which seems to be a pattern in the Neville family, to be fair, um, which is quite interesting. So you have um, Isabel here, and then we've got the, the child of the Neville family with the um, satire of the pillow, which is quite interesting. So this was obviously a child that died relatively young um, in the family and is kept here. And, um, yeah, it's quite, quite interesting in that sense, really. To have that there, but no name placed upon. So, so all in all, St Mary's Church is a, a wonderful church. It wasn't always known as St. Mary's Church, though. It had, did have a dedication during time to St. Gregory. Now, Gregory as a name has a distinct connection to Priory and to the Neville's, the same as Gregory and St. Clair does. So they're all pretty much in bed with each other, but the St. Gregory aspect is the, the quite an interesting point and in where it was changed later on. And we'll probably see a bit more about St. Gregory when we get to St. Cuthbert's Church, which is the next one on our journey in.